How do you stop the birds from attacking guests? Probably put the birds away before the guests get there. <laughs> <laughs> put the guests in a cage. Hello, my fellow sniffers, flighters, and newbies. My name is Marlene McCohen. This is Leo. This right here is Rocky. Rocky, say hi. Um, that's Blue. Hi, Blue. Um, Leo's trying to pull my hat off right now because Leo's all jealous about this situation. Um, first of all, they're in a relationship, sort of. Leo's not in the relationship, but Blue's definitely in the relationship. Also, Blue and Rocky get along. They sit together a lot, but right now with Blue flying around, that's like irritating Rocky a little bit. Proud bird, yes. Today, I have a very interesting video planned for you. We're gonna do a Q&A with my friend, Naora, and this is a very important video that I think is kinda necessary. <laughs> and yes! And I think it'll be helpful for a lot of you guys. I've wanted to do this video for a while, and I think it will cover some important topics. So today we are gonna interview my friend on how she befriended all of my parrots. I really think this is an important video because let's face it, birds are very jealous, they can be very territorial, and some of you are in relationships with people that the birds might not approve of, and that can make life really hard. So in this video, we're going to do an interview with Naora on how she befriended and even bonded with a lot of my birds. Now keep in mind, guys, I have 12 birds. They're all different kinds of birds, and most of them are rescues, so the fact that she's been able to do this is pretty cool. And a lot of you have given up. Like, I know that there's some people in relationships where your partner just can't even have an amicable relationship with the bird, so that's what we're gonna talk about today, because keep in mind, although Naora comes over here a lot, she doesn't live here. Working with parrots can sometimes take constant interaction and focus, right? So how has she been able to do this without being here every single day. How was she able to establish that relationship? So we're gonna talk to her today. And by the way, some of you have asked me questions on this subject on Instagram. For those of you who wanna be a part of it, you can follow me on Instagram at Marlene McCohen. I told you guys I was gonna do this video and ask some questions, so we'll get to your questions as well. Vinny is very excited. So let's get to Naora. Look at you just sitting there with Brando. This is gonna be a fun interview, by the way. We're gonna go visit all the birds. We're gonna talk about all the birds. So it's not just gonna be like super educational. We will hang out with the birdies as well. And she will tell you a little bit about what she did with each and every bird. And it may help you because you may have a bird that's similar to one of my bird's personalities and not the other. In these situations, you can't treat all birds the same. Let's sit down and chat with Naora for a little bit. I'm just gonna come right out and say it. What is your secret? I know you can't generalize, but what do you think like overall it's been? I think there's a couple things. One is it's not the quantity of time that you spend with the birds, it's the quality of time that you spend with them. Because being over here over and over again, doesn't, it's not gonna met you anything. It's not gonna merit you anything. You wanna spend quality time with them where they feel like they're actually being involved with something that you're doing, whether you're singing with them, dancing with them, playing with them, giving them food, giving them just basic attention. A lot of the times the birds just want to be included. So that's the quality that you're you're giving them. You do all this with the birds? You come over to my house and you sing with them and, and dance with them? And Depending all on the day, for sure. And then another secret is they also don't like to not have food for the most part. So just like your grandma or your aunt comes over with chocolates or something, the birds like knowing that they're getting a food source from you. But not chocolate. Not chocolate. You know, each bird in here likes certain foods and the secret is to also give that to them because then they know that you're giving something to them that they hold special. Blue, please don't be naughty during my interview, okay? No chewing the couch. No chewing the couch. This is a very important interview, okay? 
And I would also say it's consistency, that every time you come over, you acknowledge them. I know, you know what? So many people come into my house. Well, my real friends know, like my close friends, but a lot of people come into the house and they say, hey, why is Jersey mad at me? Like, she loved me so much before. And I'm like, because she thinks you're her friend and you came in and did not acknowledge her. You have to acknowledge her first, you know? That's really important. And I know Jersey loves your husband as well. So what does he do when he walks in? Well, he does acknowledge. He goes over to make sure that she knows that she's being looked at, that attention is being given. On the way out, I'll say goodbye to them and maybe I won't go up to every single one of them, but I'll say goodbye to them. But going up and being, just acknowledging that moment of acknowledgement, but also just talking and kissing. Jersey likes her boyfriends a lot. <laughs> they have to be right there. They have to be loving. She can tell right away Way if somebody's being fake. She but there's can. there's a, there's a vocal really tonality can. that almost every single person in this house changes to when they're talking to the birds. And Jersey is no different. Jersey's like, hello beautiful, you know, hello lovey. Like everybody just walks up and just makes sure that she knows. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. That's what? Madi does when Madi walks up to Jersey after he discovered that like if he didn't acknowledge her like now he walks right in and he he, he does this to everyone like I, I can't talk to you till I talk to Jersey he goes hello beautiful she leaves a spell on men they don't like when she doesn't want to talk to them well she'll penalize a lot the you know what's interesting is people don't realize that the birds will they won't forget they will never forget like say I ignore Jersey and the next time I come in and I go up to Jersey she'll be looking over my shoulder She'll be looking through me. She won't take food from me. She won't interact because she's legitimately saying, you upset me last time and I'm gonna make sure you know that you upset me. Yeah. But I think all the birds are that way. Leo is no different. Absolutely no different. I would say Monty and Nelly are no different. Possibly Cody and Merlin. Like they 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 will remember and the, like the next time you go up and they might like try to nip you, you'd be like, why are you upset with me? I didn't just do anything. But last time you did something and they won't forget. They want to make sure you know. How did you figure all this out? Just watching them, their interactions. It's as easy to read the birds as it is easy to read a person or like a dog or anything else. They have very humanistic qualities. You can tell when Rocky's smiling or when he's shy or whatnot. It's extremely humanistic. It's just, you have to pay attention. And people are so used to ignoring birds because when they see them outside, they don't interact with them. Unless you're throwing something on the floor and the pigeons or the seagulls are grabbing it from you. That's true. Speaking of which, my little Baby has just went for Jersey's birthday blend. Leo, do you like that? They're so cute. Which bird was the hardest to befriend? I would say possibly Cody. Really? Cody? Interesting, I wasn't, th I didn't think you'd say that. Cody was so involved with the kitchen that she would guard her spot that you really couldn't approach. Did any of the birds bite you? Merlin and Cody and Nellie and Monty broke up something that Jersey was trying to do once and I got little bites from her. What did you break up? She was trying to go after someone. Who was she trying to go after? She always gets jealous of Jenna's boyfriends. Jersey, what's your problem? Jenna's boyfriend is here? Is that a problem for you? <coughs> yeah? <coughs> what are you gonna do to Jenna's boyfriend? <coughs> That's Joey. Look at Joey though, look at Joey, he's like, he knows too. So, you were trying to protect him? I was trying to protect him. That resulted in some bites. So who hasn't bit you? Officially? What does officially mean? When I say officially, I mean that it's not a true bite, in the sense that um, I haven't been bitten by Vinny. Leo does love nibbles, but I wouldn't call that a bite. Brando too. And Rocky, your finch and budgie. They haven't bit you? No. They don't bite. No. Pablo doesn't bite. Pablo's a girl. She had to go to the vet the other day to get her beak trimmed. It's a little overgrown on one side. And I was like, she doesn't bite, don't worry. She's very sweet. Oh my God, look at this. Have you ever seen anything cuter than him in the world? Ugh, look at his head. You love Nelly and Monty. You're always with Nelly and Monty. So they bit you, Cody bit you, Merlin bit you. How do you like get over that or do you care? Or like, what was your mentality after that? Cause clearly you're good with them all, so. 
I mean, 100%, you have to recognize the reason why they bit you. That they were either scared, you did something that upset them. You can't take it personally. You just have to try again. Merlin bit because he was being territorial and also because he's new. And it was a little scary for him. He's in a new environment. I think Cody was something along those lines and also just being scared. And Nellie and Monty just kind of getting used to people and getting used to the atmosphere. And you have to recognize their limits. They needed to slowly integrate themselves. So Nellie nibbles or bites when she wants attention. And Monty generally bites when he's just upset at something that happening maybe around him as opposed to something that you're actually doing. Um, and he also bites like Leo when he's hungry, like but Leo nibbles more than anything. When the birds are hungry, they'll always behave, I'd say far worse than they would behave in a normal moment for them. A lot of people ask me, why are my birds so quiet? And I'm like, cause they're always fed. Like, you know, like I think it's really important before you work with them. I know some people are capable of some excellent training by like using food is great. And it also engages with the birds, but I like to have them kind of full and comfortable and bond with them in that way. That's just kind of my way. It's just kind of like my family way of integrating them with the home. But yeah, if you want to do like some cool things, I mean, Naora really worked with the birds by giving them food and treats. So while she was doing that, she was using that as like a bonding, which is great when you, when you first bring a bird home. I mean, for them to feel comfortable, for them to know that they're going to get food, for them to know that you're the hand that they can trust, like lots of amazing things. Naora. She comes over like a grandma with like walnuts and cashews in her bag. And carrots and strawberries. If they're getting something that they like and they're happy and then you're the one who does that, then they associate you with the food and happiness, just like any animal is going to. And honestly, just any child is going to do as well. It's the same way that you would bond with the child, is that you make them feel comfortable, that they don't have to worry about if they're going to have food or not. I mean, it's not the hugest worry in this house probably, but I'm sure like, since all of them are rescues, except for, you know, a couple, they may have had moments in their lives where they are cautious and curious of whether or not they're gonna get food again. And so it's like they, they need the attention and they need the food to feel like that they're comfortable and cozy in a situation. Do you pack the food in your house before you come here, like thinking of the birds? Or do you carry it around for yourself to eat? Or do you like say, oh, I'm going to see the birds, so I'm going to bring them some snacks? So a little mix of both. I always have food on me anyways because just in case I want to eat, but there's plenty of times that I pack a Ziploc bag just specifically knowing that I'm coming over here and I'm gonna bring them food. Because this one over here loves his little cashews. Merlin loves his carrots. Oh, Merlin loves carrots, so, so true. Yeah, while, while you guys were out of town, we made sure that there was never a chance that they would feel like they didn't have food. Aww. So believe me, they ate while you were gone. Well, I know they ate <laughs> while I was gone, I would not. <laughs> One day we should do an interview with you guys on what you do when we're gone. Noora and Madi are just two of the people in this village that take care of the birds when we're gone. Besides for George's mom living and staying in the house. Madi plays guitar for the birds when we're gone. We had sing-alongs, we had dance, made sure that the birds had the food that they liked, uh, made sure that they all got out and got to play, to played with, spend time with them all. Vinny got his boxes. How scary is Vinny? Vinny is as scary as you let him be. So are you scared of Vinny? No, no, Vinny, Vinny has his soft spots, but if you get him upset, he's, he's definitely going to be a little more of a terror. But no, I'm not scared I'm going to get bitten by him. Oh, okay. So for you guys, I want to address something just to clarify and kind of sum up some of the stuff that we've talked about here. So you see all of these things that she's doing to get the birds to like her. If you really look at it, it's a major effort on her part. Sometimes people that you live with, that live in your family and your house won't even put in this kind of effort. They think, oh, the bird should like me or your bird bit me and so they don't like me. Well, Nora's been bit by the birds and Nora keeps trying and she's great with 
all of them. It's kind of unbelievable. And that's why I thought she's a perfect candidate to interview because there are rescues that can't even bond with all of their birds and it's totally understandable. Look at Rocky. If George is around, I mean, Rocky's a completely different bird. Part of that is because he was in a cage for 10 years and has aggression issues. And part of that is because one, when George bonds with Rocky, which is a really beautiful and amazing thing, George kind of enjoys being the one that Rocky loves. And so instead of creating like socialization with Rocky, George works more on his own <laughs> relationship with Rocky. So that's why when George isn't around and I build up my relationship with Rocky, it's always much better when he isn't around. And then on top of that, I have a lot of birds. So Rocky wanting George and loving George obviously makes things kind of easy for me as well. If so, yes, I could put in a lot of the work to bond with Rocky, but um, he's always going to just love George more. But I sit and hold Rocky and the aura has sat and Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, did you want to be interviewed? What's your issue? <laughs> Naora, you've held Rocky. Yes, Rocky was wanting so badly to be in my lap that time. Yeah, he gets like that. He gets really sweet. He, he, is, he is actually a really loving bird. But it took him a while to get to that point. Yeah, I, I distinctly remember, because after you got him, he, he was really upset and just kind of needed his space. And then um, when you had the duck in the back, when you had Charlie, I was out there one time with Charlie and Rocky walked right over and just sat next to me. And that was probably about six months after you got him. And that's when I realized that Rocky was finally calming down, that he felt, he felt secure enough to be near me, did not need to be petted or played with. He just wanted to be near me and acknowledged. You put a lot of effort into trying to understand them rather than putting your ideas of what they should be acting like. Like, cause we're all used to dogs and cats and certain animals just kind of running up to us and giving us love. But you're like, oh, you bit me? What did I do wrong? Let me try to figure this out. You really observed, which I always talk about guys, observing the behavior. This is what Naora has done, and that's really helped her build all of these relationships. Not every relationship is perfect, nor is my relationship with every single one of my birds. I, I got a long way to go with Blue, but as you can see, Blue's come a long way, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, it's always a work in progress. I, different times, bond so much more with different birds, and I love it. Okay, also another thing about you is like, you're able to give like all of the birds head scratches. Even Nellie and Monty. Some people are scared of Nellie and Monty. Like oh, how they squeak <laughs> too much. Okay, there's a difference between being able to like chill with a bird, hang with a bird, pick a bird up, and then just like love on them, like giving Nellie and Monty head scratches and such. How did you do that? I just kept trying. What about if they bit you? I still kept trying. You know, Nellie wanted to be scratched, but she wanted it her way, consistently her way. And you just kind of have to realize that she's just wanting attention. You give that to her if you're comfortable. Monty, you just have to get past his initial kind of jumpiness. And then once you get past that, he's extremely happy to be touched. Isn't that crazy? Like he's like the grumpy one. You would yeah. think that he's a scary one. And then once you get past that, once you hold him and he realizes you're gonna like give him love, he's like the most loving. He's the most loving out of all of them. Like you could do anything with Monty. You could turn him upside down. You could teach him like tricks. Like he's so cool. He's like Groucho. What was that uh, the Sesame Street character? The, the one in the dumpster, Oscar the Grouch. Yeah, he's like the Oscar. Very much so. He's kind of, he wants to be like the old grumpy man. And he then is. once you like kind of break past that, he's so happy just to sit there. He just wants to be acknowledged. He just 100% wants to be acknowledged. He wants to know that he's included. He wants to know that he's near you. And once you do both of those, he's perfectly fine. It's so true. It's amazing that like you could come over and figure this out. You know, my friend LL, Vinny came flying at her and she just caught him. And I always tell everyone like, I'm just kind of being over cautious because I don't want people to trust birds too much that haven't worked with them. So I always like put a fear, especially when kids come over. I'm like, he's going to bite you, you know, he was not. You know, or he might not. I don't know if a kid's gonna stick a finger in a cage, so I always put out all the warnings. I tell everyone, if Vinny flies at you, just like duck and cover your face. But like, he doesn't actually ever fly at anyone. No, it's okay. We have a new arrival. He doesn't know about Brando, so. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> He's 
flown over here because let's say he wants to watch TV and she's sitting with me. She just put her arm up and caught him because she's just calm under pressure. You know what I mean? He also landed on the Indian delivery guy's head. That was so cute. And the guy loved it. He was like, oh, <laughs> it was so cute. What's your favorite bird of mine? Oh, you can't make me do that. They each have like a special space in my heart. You know, as we're talking right now, I'm legitimately just scratching Jersey. So Jersey has one spot in my heart for certain. She's just the sweetest. Brando's got another little spot. Leo's got another spot. I don't, I mean, there's no bird in here that's absolutely a favorite. There's just ones that are easier to be with and that are just cutesy in their own way. Like Brando's so, Brando being the baby is just the cutest little thing in the entire world. Watching him discover things. I know, everyone's kind of like obsessed with Brando. And he makes the cutest sounds. He Even does. when we're not torturing him. Look, Leo's gonna go torture Blue right now. Yeah. Because Blue is interrupting his uh, his loving. I know. <laughs> Blue's like... This is a whole other side of Leo that we were not aware of. <laughs> yeah, Leo's... Leo loves kids. It's a whole funny thing. But Leo doesn't like to share attention. <laughs> if you could steal any of my birds, <laughs> which one would you steal? Okay, for certain it would be Brando. Mm -hmm. How can you nod? I mean, hello. If you could keep any of my birds and take them home, who would it be? For sure, Brando. <laughs> is that what you're getting at? You're gonna wonder where your bird is one day? <laughs> I want you to say Nellie and Monty. I knew you were going there. Possibly Nellie and Monty. Yeah, why? Because I get along with them very well. I love being around them. They're so cute. Hold on. Do you mind? That's my acting stuff. I have a scene to prepare for and I don't need you guys to be eating my homework, okay? It's like ridiculous. I gotta go show up and explain to everyone why my bird ate it. He's mad at me. He's like, don't tell me this. What did you eat so far? The corner? How am I gonna explain this to my scene partner? Somebody wrote in on Instagram and wanted to know this. They asked, do you need blonde hair? Well, because your friends seem to have blonde hair, Tracy. True. You? Yeah. I think Tracy's is more real than mine. Is this one I'd say so, judging by those roots. I don't roll with blonde friends that much, but I love my blonde friends. They're the stalkers, just what I like. I definitely stalk you. I know. Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you. Questions from Instagram. Is one of your birds easier to introduce to guests than others? Yeah, like, okay. If a man comes over... It's definitely Jersey. If anyone comes over, who is it? Jersey. True. And Brando. Brando. Brando's like the easiest, guys. It's like, because he's a baby and he loves socialization and everyone loves him and he's not scary for anyone. Just a little bird and then they smell him and then they're like, whoa, what? But if there's a child involved, Leo. Oh, yeah. Leo's like, me? <laughs> me? Yes? <laughs> Absolutely. Somebody wrote, my cockatoo starts screaming when I have visitors, what do I do? Do you know why the, the cockatoo is screaming? Possibly either a little scared or a little excited. Usually it's because they're not being included, so they're jealous. Usually what's happening is like the person has guests, they're focusing on the guests, the guests kind of didn't go over and introduce themselves. Like when someone comes over here, we get it all out of the way right away. Hey, I gotta explain to you, this bird's gonna love you, you need to give the bird attention with jersey, da 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 da, then the bird's gotta be right here. I would say try that like try inclusion inclusion is very important to birds because now you're part of the flock and someone's taking you away and so it's like of course the bird's gonna scream it's like hey hey you're mine you're mine but you got to show the bird that like that it's okay okay so I feel like you take risks with the birds they bite you you figure out why you might try something again like why do you take these risks Having known you as long as I have and witnessing the birds around you as long as I have is that I've realized it's not really a trial and error. It's the fact that they kind of have to get used to you in their environment and they have to be comfortable with you. And so that just takes some time. So as soon as I was over here long enough with Cody here and giving Cody food, Cody felt more comfortable coming near me, being included around me. And so even though I've been bitten by her and it was quite a little, you know, not pleasant moment, I I just felt like as long as she gets little by little more and more comfortable being around me and seeing you also interact positively with me. Mm -hmm. And I actually think what's really helpful in this house as well is that Sandy is so comfortable with all the birds and with majority of the humans that the birds also watch Sandy be comfortable with me and any other animal being comfortable with me, any of the other birds being comfortable. And I think that makes them more calm and comfortable. You think that the birds pick up cues from the dog? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. because 
because uh, when Leo first was in the house, it was a little bit shaky for him, I think, at first. Just trying to getting a little bit used to people and used to the company and just a different environment. Yeah, I know you've mentioned it before with Rescue, is that you're legitimately picking up something with the ability to think and taking them from one environment and putting them in another environment. It's a scary thing for animals, the same would it be scary for a human. Mm -hmm. Once you give them the comfort of their own cage and their own food and a certain level of consistency, as soon as that was kind of in place, and then I know that Leo watched me with the other birds, I went up to Leo and I said, can I can I pet you? Can I, can I scratch your head? Can I touch you? Leo just kind of watched me and then ducked his head down. And that's when I was like, okay, so Leo just needs to be the one in control. He needed to, to have the moment where he wasn't feeling like somebody was just approaching and taking advantage. Once we got past that, after I asked him a few times, then he was comfortable just with me coming up and just scratching. But it was kind of like he needed to be the one who kind of gave me permission, as opposed to me just taking that. Now Cody, in the last few months, has been much more loving towards me. And when you guys were out of town, was consistently trying to be around me and consistently trying to get head scratches. Right now, obviously, Cody's a little busy, but just in general, when Cody's around, is a little more comfortable and wants to be around me. And I let, I let Cody come to me as opposed to me trying to force a relationship. That's a big thing with birds actually. Like if you don't force a relationship, a lot of the time you will be the person that they they want. Not if you ignore the bird, but if you acknowledge the bird, if you feed the bird, if you make the bird comfortable, but don't force your expectations. Cause sometimes people might have a cockatoo and the cockatoo is all loving and wants head scratches and this and that, and they get an African gray and they're like trying too much. And mm -hmm. that doesn't really work so well with African greys. No, they want attention when they want attention and mm -hmm. when they don't want attention, they don't want anybody around them. They kind of yeah. want to do their own thing. It also speaks to the fact that like we weren't around and then you were able to bond more and a lot of people are like, hey, my bird's starting to like somebody else. What do I do? I'm like, go alone and bond with your bird because as soon as the leader is gone, the bird might look for someone else to bond with, you know? It's happened to me. You know my cockatiel mm -hmm. was obsessed with me when I was seven years old. My parents sent us to camp overseas for five weeks. When we came back, my bird was obsessed with my mother and it never changed. Well, I mean, I don't think any of the birds in this house, especially like when I can say, Cody, Cody's not gonna pick me over you. Not any day. No. But if you're doing something else and Cody wants attention and wants it from me, Cody's going to come to me to get that attention. Mm -hmm. That head scratch, that piece of food and wants to sit with me. But I'm, I'm not trying to replace you. And I think anybody who comes over wanting to just either have a date with somebody who has a bird or just a friend showing up, that expectation is should never be from that person that they're ever going to replace their person. Like you are their person. I might come in as some type of favorite towards them, somebody that they enjoy being around and being, you know, with and being played with and getting food from. But I am I am not the replacement for you in the oh, least bit. That brings up a good point. One thing you guys should always remember, never try to have a guest or another person work with the bird when it's on their favorite person. So for example, if anyone wants to hold any of my birds that are really bonded to me, don't encourage that person to take the bird away from me. I can be in control and put that bird on somebody and tell the bird it's okay, but generally you wanna work with the bird in a neutral environment. Don't encourage anyone to approach a parrot that is on its favorite person. See, Brando's being well socialized right now. Like he's not dying to come over to me. Like he's so used to being on guests that mm -hmm. like he's really happy right there. He doesn't have to be on me. And I like my birds to be that way, honestly, guys. Like I'm not huge about my birds being on my shoulder, maybe the little ones. Not for any kind of like aggression reasons or anything like that. Just cause I, I, I just like to be able to be super mobile and fast. So I prefer to not have birds being obsessed with being on my shoulder. A question from the crowd was, I'm getting a baby crimson bellied conure. What's the best way to introduce them to guests? Like what we did with Brando, consistency of them always going on every guest. Don't let a guest come over. I mean, you can if they're scared of birds or something, but always try, say, hey, do you want to meet my bird? Really try to take that opportunity when someone comes into the house to get them to hold your bird because the more socialization the bird goes through, the better, especially with 
a baby bird, mm -hmm. you know, where that's a lot easier than a rescue. But that doesn't mean it's not possible with a rescue and it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. You definitely should. I have play dates come over for Leo, just so Leo can get his fix to play with children. <laughs> How do you make sure the birds don't love the guests more than you? They're not going to. They're not really going to. There is a, I have heard and seen and experienced like, let's say I get a bird and I get in a relationship. I have seen that bird fall in love with the partner. Yeah. But usually people that come and go, unless they're like way better at birds than you or understanding something about the bird or, you know, usually that you don't have to worry too much about that if you're doing your job right. So now George is in the background slamming pots and pans. <laughs> as usual. And Rocky's back. George. What, No noise. Just get the pot that you need out. Huh? <laughs> I'm filming you right now. What is the best way for someone who's scared of birds to interact with them? At their own pace. <laughs> yes, exactly, Brando. Somebody who's scared of birds should not be forced to be around a bird. You don't ever put a bird on somebody who's scared of them. It's not good for the bird. No, not at all. Because the bird's gonna feel that, that fear and more than likely gonna react badly. Do you mind, Baloo? That's my hair. How do you stop the birds from attacking guests? Probably put the birds away before the guests get there. <laughs> <laughs> put the guests in a cage. Just kidding. No, honestly though, you can't put your birds or your guests in danger because some people have some weird reflexes and they could just like swat a bird. So that's a time that maybe your birds just need to be safe in the cage away from whoever they might want to attack um, until you've worked and socialized with the bird. Don't take chances. Do I need to introduce guests one by one? Will too many people meeting my birds stress my bird yeah actually I would say 100%. one by one yeah definitely I wouldn't like create a crowd but you know your bird every bird's different you know but generally birds like to know what kind of movements are around them you'll see like let's say you go to pet Leo's head and George's hand moved real quick Leo's gonna probably bite me you know like so just like one kind of movement at a time work with one person I would say that's the way to go I mean can you imagine you're sitting there and five people come up all at the same time to try to talk to you and touch you. I'd say the same thing for a bird. This one says not about humans, what about visitor birds? Is there a different method to get them to get along? It depends on the reason. If you're bringing a new bird home, you wanna make sure you quarantine the birds. And then I have a whole video on that. If you're bringing a bird over for a play date, you really want to make sure that you are aware that the other bird is, you know, vet checked or, you know, not a bird that could bring diseases into your home, hence why we quarantine our birds. And if you are bringing the bird into your home to keep, then you want to do a slow introduction. Usually you might want to watch my video, how to get two birds to get along. Someone wants to know how my guests react to my birds and how I react to them. My guests love my birds. It's just in the way that you show them and educate them and introduce them, you know? If you also, on that note, it's not just about how you introduce the birds. It's also about showing your love and passion for the birds and showing them that like not respecting the birds is not okay. People who come over to this house already know that they're walking into a certain level of animal interaction. When I first met you, you, you I, was, I was told that there were birds in the house. And when I came in, you let me know that there were birds and asked me if I felt comfortable. Yeah, good job you said yes. <laughs> yes. A decade later, I'm still allowed around. Yeah. I think that's it. I think we got all the questions. Is there anything else you want to say? Outside of what we, you've discussed previously in other videos, which is that the birds are kind of like, uh, think of the like three to five year old toddlers in some levels and somewhere around the three to five year old intelligence. And that's how you should treat them. Yeah. The more you realize how much they know, they, they really do listen. They really do pay attention. For the most part, they're they're 100% noticing everything. You know, just... Yes, I know. What else do you want to say? What else? Brand Brando's not getting enough attention, clearly. Yeah, and then your bun interrupted Leo's head scratches. Oh. And then Blue's over here having a conniption because 
Leo's getting love. I right. think we covered pretty well for part one. Send your questions in for part two. Send your questions in for part two, more specific questions. And if there's anything else you wanna know, like how Naora watches the birds when I'm gone, or maybe we could do a video on what to do when you're away. I can talk to you about grooming your friends for bird sitting. <laughs> Very important. Oh yeah. Ooh. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments if you also want a video of what Naora does when I'm away to watch these birds. Yeah, look at the love fest going on over there. Ooh, exciting. Don't forget to subscribe if you love birds and believe in an engaged, not caged, and wanna spread the word about how amazing these creatures are. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see from me in the comments today. I'm really interested in that. For those of you who made it through the entire video. I love you guys for just the constant education and care that you put into your birds. It's the most important thing. Also, you might want to put in the comments other ways that we forgot. I mean, we may not have covered everything. I never expect that we do. So love you guys. Bye. By the way, don't forget if you guys are looking for an amazing bird food brand for your bird that is healthy, organic, and not full of food colorings and sugar and peanut smash, check out Marlene's signature blend. I did this along with Topps Parrot Food. We just launched in the UK. Northern Parrots now sells our food. You guys have been asking for it. You got it. Also, Things for Wings in Canada sells our bird food right now. I'm proud to announce and they will ship it to you. I encourage you guys to check out my Feathered Fun Box. It's a passion project. It's a subscription box that comes with parrot toys for your bird and also special merch. Kind of like my dream box. Honestly, I put so much into it. I love that there's something like this for birds out in the world. That's why I created it. www.featheredfunbox.com. I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for listening.